2018. Uh, Nick Marienthal, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Right hand over heart. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Nick. <clears throat> Karen, please call the roll. Director Dixon? Here. Director Mishler? Here. Director Magner? Here. Director Kelly? Here. Chairman Malloy? Here. Okay. Um, amendments to the agenda. Yes, we're going to pull item 9F. Okay. All right. Anything else? Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as uh, amended. Second. Director Magner? Aye. Director Dixon? Aye. Director Mishler? Aye. Director Kelly? Aye. Chairman Loy? Aye. Item five, presentations. We'll start with district highlights. Good evening, Jane. Good evening, Good evening Mr. Agenda. Chairman, members of the board. It's my pleasure th this evening to bring you the district highlights for the month of June. As we all know, June kicks off our summer months, and the summer months for Pleasant Valley Recreation and Park District are extremely busy. So we're going to start with our senior center, I think. There we go. Um, tomorrow is the first Thursday of the month. We have our monthly um, lunch and movie. We are... Uh, serving uh, Presto Pasta lunch. Presto Pasta is one of our great um, community sponsors. And sad to say, our lunch is completely booked out. So there's no extra spaces in the lunch, but everyone is invited to come at one o'clock and enjoy a really nice uh, air-conditioned auditorium as we watch the movie about um, Churchill. It'll be the movie, The Darkest Hour. So please come, if you haven't registered for the lunch, come and join us for the movie at one o'clock. The Senior Center will also be hosting on the f first Tuesday in July our Independence Day dance. So it'll again be in our Community Center Auditorium. It, we're asking you, all the adults, to put on your red, white, and blue and come and join us. If you don't want to dance, come and listen to the great music that will be played. We will have our live 18-piece big band, the Seniors of Note, playing. So it's a great afternoon. It'll start at 1230 and go to about 230, so please come and join us. The Senior Center will also be hosting our summer tech fair in July. It's an electronic tech fair. Um, we're inviting local high school and college-age students to come. And then you need to pre-register for this, so please call the Senior Center at 805-482-4881. Sign up in advance. You can bring your own device, and we're getting pretty techy for, with these kids. You know they know everything. so. Uh, the latest thing I think is a Fitbit. You know, there's your cell phones, your digital cameras, your tablets, iPads, so, um, laptop computers, whatever you have questions, bring them on in and the kids know all. So we'll try to help you out with all your everything you need to know. I had promised you last month that we would give you a recap for the expo that we held in May. We were very excited this year. Um, our program specialist, Denise Clare, kind of ran with this and chaired this event for us, and um, we we're very pleased. We thought the event was very, very successful. We think we had close to maybe 800 to 1,000 community members stop by. We had four marvelous sponsors. We actually had a diamond sponsor this year, so um, CMH from Ventura Community and Memorial Hospital stepped up and was a diamond sponsor for us. We also had Brookdale out on Santa Rosa Road come in and sponsor the lunch, so we were able to serve a lunch. We had our art gallery going on. We had over 74 different exhibitors there. I think you had a chance for about 12 different health screenings. We used room number six to highlight our bingo classes and programs that we offer, and we got a lot of new people who found out things that they can come and enjoy. So um, we guesstimate our estimate our um, expenses came out to about $1,400, which wasn't the 
counting the printing and the staffing costs, but that's what our actual um, physical expenses were for like renting canopies and that kind of stuff and paying for fire permits. But we were really excited that our revenues came in over $18,000. So it, to us, was a very successful event. Moving on to our sports, our adult softball and kickball leagues are in full swing. Registration has been steady, according to Lanny, and the softball leagues are pretty much the same number as they had last year at 53, running strong. And kickball has stepped it up. They've moved from seven teams to, I'm sorry, from four teams to seven teams. So they're ready for the summer months. Basketball should have ended today. And there will be an offering of a five-on-five -five league Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and a three-on-three -three league on Thursday and Friday. And I think Lanny says he's got a lot of registration that they have to get through and, and move on with that. We wanted to give you a recap of another special event we had. That was this past weekend. It was National Trails Day, and um, I think I heard there was a lot of good work going on out there. Uh, we, they actually started on Friday where they had the California Conservation Corps come in and work on some of the trail maintenance. And then on Saturday, they had a rapture show and about 30 volunteers come out and they worked on um, trail mark and signage cleanup and they had an Outlook Star grading project going on. So I think um, they felt they got about 60 hours of good hard labor out there and, and were very pleased with that event. Another one of our special summer programs is our Movies in the Park. The first one will, will be on July 13th. They will be showing the movie Toy Story. It will be held at the Community Center Park. The movie will begin at dusk, but we're inviting all our community members to grab a chair and a blanket and to come out early because from 6 to 8, there will be lots of... Um, live music going on. They're going to be sponsored by the Rock City Studios. You can come out and enjoy some music before you watch the movie. At our Aquatic Summer Center, the summer months are really, really packed and busy. Um, there's all kinds of classes going on and also specialty camps. To begin with, the Pirate Mermaid Camp will be beginning on June 18th. There'll be a Junior Lifeguard Camp <coughs> beginning on June 25th a water polo camp on June 29th. There will also be paddy scuba classes, water safety instruction classes, lifeguard training, and springboard diving classes. Also, our summer months, our swim lessons get booked up extremely quickly. So we're asking everyone to please register early, register as soon as you want to. You can go online, um, grab an activity guide, check out the schedule, the times, call our, our customer service ladies at the admin office at 805-482-1996. And we also have our aquatic center. You can call there, but register as early as possible because um, there is limited times and spaces. There will also hopefully be time left for a few, few uh, reservations for parties. So um, if you want to get a swim party in this summer, make sure you book it in advance and plan it ahead of time. As you can see on this slide, there are a list of tons of different activities as far as camps for the kids this summer. So if they want to dance, if they want to do art, if they want to you know, work with Legos, robotics, um, we've got our junior ranger and our outdoor survival. There's all kinds of different things. So please grab one of our activity guides, go online, and check out and see what, how busy you can keep your kids. And, and we don't want to forget our four-legged friends. So there are puppy and level two obedience classes going on. We also, in our cultural arts department, have added some new instructors. So we've got some new art classes. I know one of them is an artist trading card class, which I had never heard of, but it sounds really interesting. We've got um, some projects um, set up where we're going to have actually family art nights. So please um, find out the information about that and sign up for those. And um, we've got a couple new ukulele instructors. So if you ever wanted to pick up an instrument and try it, I think ukulele is a good one to begin with. And then, of course, in our health and wellness, there's always our yoga classes, our Pilates classes, our Tai Chi classes, and Zumba Gold, among others. So please make sure you keep picking up that activity guide and going through it. Out at our Cam Grove Park, our first hike will be a sunset hike. That'll be on June 14th. 
It'll start at 630. They're going to meet at the Nature Center. You do need to pre-register for these classes, so make sure you get online or you call our, our customer service ladies and sign up. It sounds like it's going to be a really fantastic, wonderful uh, experience to go out there in the evening time. We also have a number of cooking classes scheduled for the summer months and some etiquette too. So once you cook that food, you can very nicely, politely sit down and eat it. Out in our parent and child classes, um, kinder music has added classes. So they actually will be having classes on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and, sa and Saturday. These are for children ages three months to five years old. And then our Dos Caminos preschool classes, they're adding a number of classes out there also. So they're actually during the summer going to be running a five day a week program. And they're going to add a once a month preschool camp. And these are for children ages two to five. So there'll be a lot more going out at our Dos Caminos building. And then we can't forget our Camp Fantastic. Camp Fantastic will be held at the community center. Um, they've already hired all the camp counselors. They're busy being trained. They're working on all kinds of fun crafts, games, field trips, and um, planning all kinds of things for the kids to do. So that'll beginning on June 18th. It's for children ages 5 through 11. Um, the times actually will begin at 7.30, the extended hours beginning at 7.30 in the morning. So you'll have plenty of time to get your kids dropped off before you go to work. And the extended hours go to 6 p.m. So you don't have to worry about um, having to leave work early to pick kids up. They do have extended hours. So this is a great opportunity for your kids to stay really busy, make new friends, and have a great experience for the summer. And then we come to our July... National Park and Recreation Month. There are a lot of backstage staff scrambling, all kinds of things going on because uh, the Recreation and Park District will be providing recreation opportunities every day of the month. So there'll be something to do every single day. So once again, please go to our website at www.pvrpd.org. Stop by the admin office, um, the aquatic center, the senior center. There are calendars that are printed. They, um, you can go on online or you can have the calendar posted on your refrigerator. There's going to be things from guided hikes to concerts in the park. There's going to be a skate park events. There's going to be synchronized swimming events, sand volleyball, disc golf, yoga in the park. Um, we're actually going to have a Sunday bingo bash. Um, just too much for me to mention, but please, every single day, there's something for you to, to try and an opportunity to try an, an, a, some, an activity, an event that you haven't done in the past or you didn't want to you know, sign up for an entire month worth of classes, but you'll have an opportunity to go out there for one day and try it out. So please check out the calendar, look it up, and Come out and have some fun. Our spotlight this month, it, we're going to do some of our park improvements. So um, there was out at several parks, um, drinking fountains replaced. So we had Cayagas, Wood Creek, and Quito. They each had a drinking fountain replaced. Pitch Ranch had two replaced. And Cam Grove Park had three of them replaced. And then out at several of the parks if, where they felt there was a safety issue, they replaced some picnic benches. So they had four replaced at Nancy Book, one at Locker, one at Canto, two at Quito, one at Adolfo, one at Wood Creek, and one at Arneal for a total of 11 picnic tables. And again, for safety reasons, they worked on the barbecues that were the first uh, concern for the district. So Cam Grove Park got five new barbecues. Bob Kildee got one, as well as Locker and Woodside. And then with the help of the foundation, um, you may have noticed new benches in the park. So Adolfo, Camarillo um, Community Center, Cam Grove, the Nature Center, Locker, and Valley Lindo all have a new bench out there. So you can go out and find the Waldo bench and find, discover which one is the new one in the park. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And please, for all these summer events, go to our website, call our customer service ladies, uh, the Aquatic Center, the Senior Center. We're really eager and waiting for you to sign up for all these programs. 
Super. Thanks, Jane. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. The yeah. calendar of free events is also on our Twitter page and uh, our Facebook as Facebook well. Facebook page, and yeah. It's a really great graphic with the different events on each day. It's yeah. easy to find. I, I, I actually had two, two quick questions. One is, can you, is this on? The uh, at the uh, movies in the park and and the uh, the, mu the music and things going to be ahead of time. Is there food trucks at that event too? Yes. 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 Okay. So, and also the uh, when you have the lunch in the movie event for uh, the senior center, is the limit? You said you sold out on the lunches. Is is that because limitations on how many lunches you have or how much space you have for Correct. people to it's, sit? It's limitation. We have community partners. So Presto Pasta said they would provide us lunch for seventy five. And as soon as people heard Presto Pasta, I had uh, 75 seniors signed up. Okay. So, it, yeah, it is, it's, the popular, you know, the, 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 it's a popular restaurant in town, so they, they all love that po Presto Pasta lunch. The movie is open. The movie, you know, as many people can fit in the auditorium yeah. can come and watch the movie. So, okay. Yeah, we have people who sign up for the lunch a month in advance. Yeah. So. Okay. That, all right. Thank you, Jane. Thank, thank you. Any, anything else? Okay. Um, the next item is the senior volunteer recognition, which I believe you might have something to yes. do with. <laughs> I get to stay here and continue talking to you. And it's my great pleasure. This is a, 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 one of my fun things to do. Um, the Senior Center could not exist and our programs and events could not happen if we didn't have fantastic volunteers. Um, without them, we'd be really limited as to what we could offer. And so it's my great pleasure at this time to have Mark Bradford come stand with me. Come stand with me. <laughs> Mark, um, I, have to, I have to have a paper in front of me because Mark actually, he is a volunteer who is so selfless and so giving. He actually says that he started at the age of 15 during high school. He started teaching servicemen returning from World War II how to dance their hearts into the girls they wanted to ask out on dates. Okay? <laughs> so Mark is a dancing fiend. Mark loves dance. At 18, he accepted a position at the famed Arthur Murray Dance Studio in Chicago, and he also ran a studio in Beverly Hills. He's gotten literally, I, he wrote down hundreds, I think thousands of people out of the chairs onto the dance floor. He really thinks that people don't realize what great exercise, what great social you know, interactions and connections people make by getting out and dancing. So um, he and his wife have lived here in Camarillo for over 20 years, and they've been married for how many? 65. 65 years. So um, he has given so much to his family and he has, for the number of years now, given back to the community by being one of our contract instructors. He came to me and asked me about dance lessons and said he didn't want to make a penny. He wasn't interested in making any money. And so he wanted to donate all the proceeds from his classes back to the senior center. So he takes no money from the contract classes that we offer. And he, many, many months, will have upwards of 25 people signed up for his classes. And they, he teaches... Um, the West Coast Swing, the Waltz, uh, Cha Cha, the Fox Trot. I mean, if you want to learn to dance, come. I mean, it. it actually, I got my husband out there for a couple, a couple months. Yeah. That's great. yeah, yeah. So even I got my husband out <laughs> on the dance floor at Mark's classes to come out and, and try some dancing. So I am so appreciative of our volunteers like Mark, who you know selfishly give of themselves so that our community can have a great opportunity to continue to recreate and to exercise. So uh, for, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for all you do for us. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> all right. I think our... Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> I am to public speaking. <laughs> um, I really enjoy doing what we're doing. And I did bring my wife, Charlene. Um, we love Jane. She's done so much to help and to produce all the wonderful things that happen for the community. So what I would say to you is, is that we're all very happy. We want to do this. We want the community to make money. And with it, you can see what happens. I think I've, I've expired. <laughs> Thank you.
Mark has a certificate for you, so okay. okay. We're going to we'll, we'll meet over here and right take a here. picture. Okay, that brings us to item six, public comment. Karen, do we have any cards? Megan, no, no cards? Okay. Um, we'll move on then to item seven, consent agenda. Are there any, uh, any items from the consent agenda anybody would like to pull? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as proposed? I'll make a motion to uh, accept the consent agenda uh, presented. I have a second. Second. Director Magner. Aye. <clears throat> Director Dixon. Aye. Director Mishler. Aye. Director Kelly. Aye. Chairman Malloy. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, so we move on to item eight or item seven. Eight. Let's see, no, an item 8A. Yeah, 8A, public hearing on the continuation of the Park Maintenance and Recreation Improvement District Assessment in fiscal year 2018-19. Leo. Good evening, Chairman Malloy, members of the board. Tonight I'm going to present the um, SCI Engineer's Report for the Pleasant Valley Rec and Park District Assessment District. It is recommended the board approve Resolution 594, which will be approving the Engineer's Report confirming the diagram and assessment and ordering a levy of assessment for the fiscal year 1819 for the Park Maintenance and Recreation and Improvement District for the Pleasant Valley Recreation and Park District. SCI Consulting Group um, is an engineering firm that we hired to do the um, analysis of, and to do the research as far as what the assessment tax would be for the fiscal year 1819. We have been using them for quite a few years. We've, um, they provide a revenue, we, uh, I'm sorry, we um, formed the assessment district for uh, revenue purposes, visa, and to do uh, for feasibility purposes, to uh, levy a special assessment, and for planning services. The levy or the assessment district was formed in February and March of 2001. And again, it was due to the limited revenues and the community was growing and we felt that the tax assessment would help keep up with the needs of the community. The assessment district was created to improve the park maintenance, fund future maintenance needs, fund capital improvement projects. And it, it passed with the 58.7 support from the property owners. Here's a chart that shows what the uh, assessments have been in the past. As you can see for fiscal year 1718, it has gone up to 2.31%. Uh, and we anticipate that we'll be collecting uh, $1,049,000. The annual renewal of the assessment is an authority, which is a lighting and landscape district from 1972. It provides for installation, maintenance, and servicing. An engineer's report is required, along with a public hearing. Ballot proceedings include an annual adjustment tied to the consumer price index of the LA area, which cannot exceed 3%. 
The board ultimately decides an option to increase the assessment by the CPI. For, so for this fiscal year, the CPI came in at 3.6%, but again, we're only allowed to increase it by 3%, so the parcel tax will be $40.12. The timeline for this assessment district is as follows. In February, we had a board meeting and the board directed the preparation of the engineer's report. In May, we had a resolution of intent to levy the continued assessment, preliminary approving the engineer's report. And in tonight's meeting, we're having a public hearing with the resolution to approve the final engineer's report, confirming the diagram and the assessment and to order the levy of the assessments. And in July, the submission and confirmation of those levies will be submitted to the county so that they are put on the property tax roll. Here is the diagram of the, of the community of the assessment district. As you can see, we have zones A, B, and C. And again, tonight I ask that the board Adopt resolution 594, approving the engineer's report, confirming the diagram and assessment, and ordering the levy of the assessment for the fiscal year 1819 for the park maintenance, recreation, and improvement district for the Pleasant Valley Rec and Park District. Are there any questions or comments? Anybody? Bob? No, no questions? Okay, no questions or comments. So we'll move on to the public hearing. <clears throat> okay, first I bang the gavel. I now declare this meeting open for a public hearing to consider the ordering of the improvements and the levy of the proposed assessments. Prior to the conclusion of the hearing, any interested person may file a written protest with the clerk of the board. A written protest shall state all grounds of objection. A protest by a property owner shall contain a description sufficient to identify the property owned by such owner. Are there any members of the public that would like to speak for the ordering of the improvements and the levy of the proposed assessments? You have three minutes to address the board. Seeing one, are there any members of the public that would like to speak against the ordering of the improvements and the levy of the proposed assessments? Seeing none, I now declare this public hearing closed. Okay, so the next step is a motion to adopt resolution 594, accepting the engineer's report and ordering the levy of the assessment. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 594, accepting the engineer's report and ordering the levy of assessment at $40.12. Okay, is there any other discussion? Anybody else have anything? Okay, please well, call the roll. No, we need a second, don't we? I'll second. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't notice we didn't have a second. Okay, thank you, Mike. Director Magner? Aye. Director Mishler? Aye. Director Dixon? Aye. Director Kelly? Aye. Chairman Malloy? Aye. A motion carries 5-0. Now on to 9B, introduction of... 9A? 9, excuse me, 9A. Consideration <laughs> approval of preliminary fiscal year 2018-19 budgets for the general fund assessment district and Quimby expenses. Once again, Leo. Good evening, Chairman Malloy, members of the board. Tonight I'm going to ask that the board consider and adopt the preliminary fiscal year 1819 budget for the general fund, the assessment district, and the Quimby funds. The last couple of months we've been um, working diligently on the budget. We've held three budget workshops. Those were held on April 26th, May 3rd, and May 17th. Oh, roughly, the, we, during those workshops, we balance the budget. We have a capital investment plan of $1.1 million. We continue to focus in, on enhancing our investments in community facilities and recreation programs. And we've been able to sustain progress toward meeting reserve guidelines and fiscal sustainability and accountability. We serve over 77,000 constituents. We're made up of three departments, administration, which could is general administrative support, the recreation, which formulates and administers a board, a broad public recreation program, and the parks, which is implementation of a comprehensive maintenance and park development program. We currently have three funds. We have Fund 10, which is the general fund. We have Fund 20, which is for the assessment district, 
and we have Fund 30, which was recently created for the Quimby, fee, Quimby fees, which is also known as the park dedication fees. The accomplishments, just to name a few of the district, are completed updates of the IT infrastructure. We've had a clean audit in 1718 with no findings. We increased our foundation event by 56%. We repaired or replaced a total of 38 drinking fountains, tables, benches, and barbecues. We replaced a one mile of raised concrete, and we finished over $700,000 in capital improvement projects. Our challenges that the district are facing is the rising cost of the CalPERS unfunded liability, healthcare cost, the minimum wage increase, utilities, and state legislation. The preliminary general fund fiscal year 18-19 budget has revenues of 8.026 million with an expenses of 8.012 million, which means our revenue is exceeding our expenses by $13,500. Our capital and Quimby funds are budgeted at almost $1.3 million for fiscal year 1819. As you can see from this slide, this is what the actuals have been for the prior years for our revenue and our expenses. At the time for 1617, you'll notice the revenue is at $10 million. That was when we had Quimby funds with the general fund. We have since broke that out, so it's in its own uh, fund now, as long as it, and that'll be easier to identify in the future. Our general fund budget comparison show our tax apportionment um, at 6.5 million, our rec and park revenue at 1.5, our personnel at 4.7 million, supplies and services at 3.3, and our capital and Quimby at 1.2. The capital and Quimby are both funds together in this um, slide example. Our changes in our personnel for administration for the upcoming year, there'll be no changes. Recreation will have two additional uh, positions. Parks and Assessment District will not have any, so the total change for personnel will be two. Those two changes are currently affect the two recreation positions, and they're due to the minimum wage. We're going to be reclassifying the recreation specialist to a marketing specialist, and then we'll have two additional part-time year-round recreation specialists. Major changes to Fund 10, which is the general fund, is the increase in the property tax, an increase in our rentals, and a decrease in our recognized obligation payment schedule, also known as ROPS, payment of 200000 Major changes to the budget in our personnel is an increase in the personnel expense, our CalPERS unfunded liability, and our retirement. Our services and supplies are experiencing an increase as well, and business services. And business services is primarily going up due to we have an upcoming election, and we do have to pay for that in November, along with additional reporting for our bond issuance. Now moving on to the capital projects. Our capital improvement budget for fiscal year 18-19 is 1.292 million. As you can see, it's substantially more than it was last fiscal year. We're going to be very busy. The projects that are going to be uh, done for 18-19 will be pool plaster, fiberglass resurfacing, pool slide metal support, Bob Kildee restroom roof, Freedom restroom and a concession roof, Charter Oak tree windrow, Pleasant Valley Fields painting phase one, community center exterior restrooms, Bob Kildee Irrigation Pump, Meter Enclosure at Encanto, Foothill, and Adolfo Park. <coughs> Other projects in the capital budget will be the Arneal Ranch Park Picnic Area, Pitts Ranch Park Pavilion. These projects total 396400 That will be paid with the capital funding. The remainder of the 1.292 will be paid with Quimby, I'll be showing those funds or those projects in a few moments. Here are a few pictures of what our projects um, 
are going to be. Here's the aquatic center with the pool plaster. Here's the slide that we're going to be repairing and for it's an 11 year old slide. Bob Kildee restroom roof. It's a 39 year old roof and it's deteriorated. The surface is beginning to um, suffer some leaks. Freedom Park restroom roof. It too is a old roof. It's 49 years old. It's deterioration of surface beginning to cause leaks as well. Charter Oak Tree Rin Row. We're going to continue to dedicate resources for the pruning and the removal and the planting of trees along that walkway. The Pleasant Valley Fields building. The surfaces need to be scraped, primed, and painted. The Community Center Outdoor Restroom, they'll be doing a remodel and upgrade the 48-year-old restroom. The Bob Kildee Irrigation Pump, the water pump replacement is 25 years old and it's beginning to leak. Foothill, Adolfo, and Encanto meter enclosures, their fencing is deteriorating and the pedestals and enclosures as well. Here are some um, items that at one of our workshops the board asked us to uh, bring back to them. So we're going to be uh, planning to put a pavilion at our Neal Ranch, <coughs> a pavilion at Pitts Ranch, three of those. Well, we're looking at one there, I think, right? Correct. The southernmost on that slide would be the, the one in the south, the well, su southern corner. We're looking at putting one at Pitts Ranch, that's correct. Yeah, that's one to not confuse people. Now we're moving on to the Quimby fees. These two are uh, improvement projects for the district. In 1975, uh, there was a Quimby Act. It was designed to ensure adequate open space acreage. It gave authority for passage of land de dedication ordinance only to cities and counties. Fees and land were conveyed directly to local public agencies providing park and recreation services community-wide. These funds can be used for improvements for something that increases its value or enhances the appearance. These funds are restricted and they, can only, they cannot be used for personnel purposes, that type of thing. They need to be used for park improvements. And we told, currently have $5.8 million in Quimby money. These are the developers that we've received uh, Quimby funds from. <coughs> and the projects that we're going to have for 1819 will be the Valley Lindo Restroom and Pavilion, Nancy Bush Park Playground, Nancy Bush Park Picnic Area, Nancy Bush Park Pavilion, potential restrooms at Mel Vincent, and Freedom Baseball Fields. And that totals 895600 <coughs> These are the uh, photos of the projects that the Quimby funds will be paying for. A 40, at Valley Lindor Restroom, a 40-year-old building which needs to be updated and options to repair and replace the current structure and pavilion. Another follow-up item will be a pavilion at Nancy Bush Park. And the potential restrooms at Mel Vincent Park. Now moving on to the assessment district. The district was formed in 2001. It has limited revenues. So due to, we have a growing community in park acreage and the assessment district was formed to help uh, future funding shortfalls. It was created to improve park maintenance, fund future maintenance needs, and fund capital improvement projects. Again, this is a map that you saw previously of the different zones of the assessment district, zones A, B, and C. And this is a summary of the parcels and the assessments by zone of benefit. So we have zones A, B, and C, and what they anticipate the different zones will be um, generating as far as their uh, fees. As you can see, A will be paying $40.12 a parcel. Zone B, $10.03. Zone C, $20.06. <coughs> oh, 
Fund 20, which is the assessment district was formed in fiscal year 1516. The assessment district had a 3% increase, which equates to $1.17 per parcel benefit. We service approximately 26,200 uh, parcels. And the way it's measured is a single family home is one benefit. A condo is a portion of that, 0.71. Multi-family resident is 0.65. A mobile home is 0.51. That's why you saw different rates for on the previous slide for what it is per parcel. So, so this evening I'm asking that the board consider and adopt the, the preliminary budget for fiscal year 1819 for the budgets of the general fund, the assessment district, and the Quimby funds. Any questions? Thank you, Leo. Any questions for for Mrs. Young, Mike, none, Neil, no, Bob, Elaine. No, you're getting really good at this, Leo. Yeah. Thank you. You're, you're, you're covering it all very effectively, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there any discussion on this item? I just want to. Yeah, but go ahead, Mike. I just want to uh, state something that um, I, I say almost every year when we do this. Um, you know, we obviously, as Leo had mentioned, we had have already attended three workshops. And so we at the board here has already went through all these numbers in great detail working with the staff. And so when you see us here tonight, it's not that we're just looking at something for the first time and, gee, well, you know, and, and, and blowing through it. So we have spent many, many hours already working with staff, going through revisions to come up with the document and the stuff that's in front of us tonight. So then, so when we vote on this, whatever way we're gonna do it here, uh, it's not like we just saw this five minutes ago. So we've been mm -hmm. working on this for over five, six weeks now. I just wanna update the public on that. Thanks, Mike. Anybody else? Um, could you roll back to that slide showing the capital budget for like the last five years? There's like five different bar numbers. Because um, there's really nothing more boring than a huge pile of numbers, which is what a budget is, literally, you know, an inch thick pile of paper with numbers on it. But um, this is the... This uh, slide now, well buried back here, is is a really good example and testament to the, yeah, there it is, the overall health of the district. Because for most of the 12 years that I've been here on this board, we've had uh, capital budgets uh, under the, under the 200,000 uh, number because we just weren't fiscally healthy enough to do that much. It was all we could do to just keep operating. And, um, the reflection in the last three years and in the year four is a real reflection on how much better off we are and how much more stable we are financial, financially. And that's why we have a million two in budget. I remember suggesting to a previous general manager that you know we, we should have at least 10% uh, capital budget and, and I, I was looked at like I was out of my mind that was completely impossible. And now we're comfortably exceeding that. So, um, it took everyone to do this. And I'm really proud of you guys. Thank you. That's all I have. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the preliminary uh, fiscal year 2018-2019 budgets. Second. second take mine. <laughs> Director Magner? Aye. Director Mishler? Aye. Director Dixon? Aye. Director Kelly? Aye. Chairman Loy? Aye. Budget passes 5-0. Item 9B, introduction of ordinance number nine, amendment to section 234 of ordinance number eight, governing the use of parks, recreation areas, and facilities. Good evening, Chairman Malloy and members of the board. Megan Hamlin, Administrative Analyst. So tonight, I am presenting to you on exactly what Chairman Malloy just said. Um, it is recommended that the board review and introduce Ordinance Number 9, amending Section 234 of Ordinance Number 8, 
by requesting a motion to read the complete ordinance number nine title, ordinance number nine, and ordinance of the board of directors of the Pleasant Valley Recreation and Parks District, amending article two, section 234 of ordinance number eight, as amended in January 2018, regulating the use of the district skate park and to waive future readings and then consider a motion to approve the introduction and first reading of the district's ordinance number nine and ordinance of the board of directors of the pleasant valley recreation and park district amending article two section 234 of ordinance number eight as amended january 2018 regulating the use of the district skate park so a little background on this um, as the district has evolved these ordinance help control um, the use of the district facilities and the different language that's used for all aspects of the use of parks and the facilities. Um, initially, we had numbers one through six, and they were all maintained as separate, different documents. In October of twenty, or excuse me, of two thousand and eight, ordinance one, two, five, six A, and seven were all consolidated by staff and legal counsel to create ordinance number eight. And ordinance number eight has been amended several times over the last 10 years, initially in May of 2010, and then again in, um, it was updated in 2011 of uh, April, again June 2015, and then again in January of 2018, which is the version that we are currently using today. So at the May, tw uh, May 2nd, 2018 board meeting, the board of directors approved an operational change to the skate park. So the district is in the process of doing these few things, um, removing daily staff requirements, approving new hours of operation, and discontinuing the sales of skate park passes. Due to these changes, the district needs to amend section 234 skate park regulations to include verbiage that includes other wheeled rec recreational devices, which means non-motorized um, non bicycles, scooters, or wheelchairs, and the writing of a skateboard or other wheeled recreational device for stunts, tricks, things like hazardous recreational activities, and it's defined in um, section 831.7 of the government code, and any user not wearing a helmet, elbow pads, and knee pads are subject to a um, citation under the ordinance of our health and safety code, section 115800B1. So at this time, there is no fiscal impact associated with this action. However, the district could see an approximate net cost savings of $15,000 per year by discontinuing daily staff at the skate park. So again, it is recommended that the board review and introduce ordinance number nine, amending section 234 of ordinance number eight, requesting a motion to read the complete ordinance nine, titled ordinance number nine, an ordinance of the board of directors of the Pleasant Valley Recreation and Park District, amending article two, section 234 of ordinance number eight, as amended January 2018, regulating the use of the district skate park and to waive further readings and then consider a motion to approve the introduction and first reading of the district's ordinance number nine and ordinance of the board of directors of the Pleasant Valley Recreation and Park District amending article two, section 234 of ordinance number eight as amended January 28, regulating the use of the district skate park. Questions? Any questions for Megan? <laughs> <laughs> You're the attorney, Bob. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any questions? You could, know, you, no. could you say that all again? Yeah. <laughs> Please yeah. don't make me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Megan. Uh, you know, now it's my my turn to recite here, um, because because there's an ordinance, we have to do things very formally and, and by the book. Um, I need. I, I'm asking the board for a motion to read the complete ordinance number nine, title ordinance number nine, an ordinance of the board of directors of the Pleasant Valley Recreation and Park District, amending Article 2, Section 234 of Ordinance Number 8, as amended January 2018, regulating the use of the district skate park and to waive further reading. So moved. Okay. I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> well, yeah, you want to read that? Can you, oh, what do you yeah, want me to read? Go, go back here. here. You want me to read this page right here? Let me read, read this first. 
and then the, and then. This. Okay, I move that the board secretary conduct a second reading by title only of proposed ordinance number nine and waive further reading of the ordinance then. Oh. And you're the board secretary. So I'm the board secretary, so I will go on. Okay. Um, as board secretary, ordinance number nine and ordinance of the board of directors of the Pleasant Valley Recreation and Park District amending article two, section 234 of ordinance number eight as amended January 2018, regulating the use of the district's uh, skate park. Okay, is there any discussion from the board? Okay, seeing none, um, are there any public comments on this item? Does any member of the public wish to speak on this item? Okay, seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the introduction and first reading of the district's proposed ordinance number nine and ordinance the board of directors of the Pleasant Valley Recreation and Park District amending article two, section 234 of ordinance number eight as amended January 2018, regulating the use of the district skate bar. So moved. I'll second. Please call the roll. Director Dixon. Aye. Director Mishler. Aye. Director Magner. Aye. Director Kelly. Aye. Chairman Malloy. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Okay. That puts us to item 9C. Consideration and approval of bid award for parks maintenance yard driveway. Good oh, we evening. get to do something. Great. Yes. Good evening, Chairman Malloy, members of the board. Um, tonight, before you, we have um, item 9C, the con consideration and approval of the bid award for parks maintenance yard driveway. Um, it is recommended that the board approve and authorize the general manager to enter into an agreement with Civic Construction Associates um, to replace the asphalt driveway with concrete driveway at the maintenance yard in the amount of $33,205. A um, little background, the funding um, and project were identified during the capital improvement budget workshops for fiscal year 2017-18. <clears throat> the board um, appropriated capital funds in the amount of $35,000 for this project. Um, in 1977, the maintenance yard was built to house all the equipment and the driveway was built over underground fuel tanks that eventually deteriorated and had to be removed. Um, those are the main um, contributing factors that caused the degradation of this asphalt. Here's some pictures that uh, kind of paint the picture. Oops. When these um, tanks were removed, they were um, they were patched with with um, asphalt. But being that it wasn't, it was just kind of like a temporary fix. It didn't hold up that long, and with without proper maintenance, it, it just deteriorated pretty rapidly after removal of those tanks. <clears throat> um, the area is approximately 3,900 square feet of surface area. Um, this was um, reduced from the original uh, um, amount of area that we were looking at replacing um, when we went first went out to bid um, back in September. Um, the the um, the bids came back higher than expected. Um, the lowest bid was $9,000 more than what we had for. So um, it was the board's direction at that time to reject all bids and go back out to bid, reducing the scope of work. So um, in doing so, we, we identified 3,900 square feet that absolutely needed to be replaced. So, <clears throat> so amongst this um, 3,900 square feet, we had uh, 1, 000, approximately 1,200 square feet that we were recommending a uh, thickness of six inches for the heavy um, trucks that enter our property for trash and, and deliveries. 
And in part of this process, we also examined the cost of um, maintaining both asphalt and concrete. And um, the staff decided concrete was a much better substrate for, for our parking area. Uh, originally, we had um, some areas over here that we had slated. They were kind of out of, out of the bounds of the normal delivery and, and use of this parking lot, but um, right now it's gravel and we were looking at putting concrete there, but we, in reducing the scope of this, we, we, we um, decided this was the absolute um, area that we needed to reconstruct. Uh, right here in the green, that's the, the six inch thick for the trash truck that comes in and, and also deliveries. The rest is we have we have um, slated at four inch. Scope of work um, is to remove all the existing marked asphalt, um, grade and compact uh, road base to ninety percent compaction, um, add twelve hundred square feet of sub base at six inches depth, and uh, add twenty seven hundred square feet um, at, of concrete at four inches depth. And we're looking at reinforcing all, um, all the concrete with number four half inch um, rebar every 18 inches on center. And we're looking at using a 3000 PSI concrete with a medium broom finish and ex expansion joints to be one inch thick. Um, in April 2018, staff went out um, for RFP, and six companies attended the man mandatory draw block, uh, and five out of the six submitted bids. Um, the low bid was um, Civic Construction Associates, an amount of um, $33,205. And um, here's a here's just the. Um, Kind of are all the proposals that came back with um, with categories that we that we require um, they all were in good standing they all had good references insurance um, the appropriate classification for, um, for a contractor's license etc we had um, we had uh, bids ranging from um, Thirty-three thousand dollars to the forty-six, forty-six nine hundred eighty. And um, here's a, a breakdown of the base bid and the alternate bid. That's that includes all um, concrete at six inch. And you can see the differences there. We looked at that as an option for just you know for longevity of the the area, being that we do bring trucks and whatnot through there. Man, I'm, I'm sorry. Is that, is that correct? That Civic Construction is the same price for both. Yes, it is. Okay. They, um, it, I, I spoke with them and it was a, a little mistake, but they were comfortable with that price for the six inch. Um, they they. They built in enough um, profit margin to cover the, all expenses and plus come out with um, a profit. So they were comfortable with it, and um, and out of the out of all these these bids, um, um, Civic Construction was um, tw about twenty six percent less than the lowest bid from the previous time we went out to bid on on this project and it, and it, oddly enough the the um the the project i scaled back 26 percent so it's kind of in line with the last little bid so and let's see <coughs> so um my uh, recommendation is award the award is based on base bid and specifications. Uh, Civic Construction Associates meets all these required specifications. And the, 
the district allocated $35,000 from capital funds for this project. And if we just, if we vote on uh, moving forward with civic construction, um, our fiscal impact would be $33,205. So tonight we are recommending that the board approve and authorize the general manager to enter into agreement with civic construction and associates to replace the asphalt driveway with concrete at the maintenance chart in the amount of $33,205. Go ahead, Lynn. Matt, so you're telling us that they will do the red and the green, all six inch? Yes. For the same price? Yes. Okay, thank you. Wow, looks like the board that scaled this project back in September did a good thing. <laughs> we saved a little money and got and got what we needed. Mm -hmm. Any other any other questions or comments, Mike? No. The only thing I would add, which is in the staff report, and to me is a is a really important thing, especially when the low bidder is so low, is that this contractor has done work for the city of Camarillo, the city of Simi Valley, and the city of Ventura Housing. Mm -hmm. So we have some local references as well as they're a local company. Yeah. And uh, so it's a good a good local bidder. Mm -hmm which we all love to see. No further commentary, no further questions. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to approve and authorize the general manager to enter into an agreement with uh, Civic Construction Associates to replace the asphalt driveway with a concrete driveway in the amount of $33,205. Do I have a second? Is, is that with six inches entirely on in the project? Yeah. Well, they can. They have the option to either go with four or six. Yes. And I'm assuming staff will figure out that six is the better yes. option. Okay. So then I don't have to put that in the amendment, I mean, in the proposal. All right. Okay. I second. Please call the roll. Director Mishler? Aye. Director Dixon? Aye. Director Magner? Aye. Director Kelly? Aye. Chairman Malloy? Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Uh, item 9-D, uh, consideration, selection, and vote for a county oversight board special district member. Good evening, uh, Chairman Malloy, uh, members of the board, Anthony Miller, administrative analyst. And uh, tonight I am uh, requesting that uh, the board, we're recommending that the board uh, select and vote for a county oversight board independent special district member. Uh, a little bit of background on the uh, oversight board uh, process. Uh, all RDA uh, organizations work under oversight boards and uh, in accordance with uh, ABX 126 uh, as of uh, July 1st, all oversight boards in the county of Ventura will be consolidated at the county level. And uh, they will be responsibility or responsible for regulating the actions of redevelopment agencies and approving prospective actions regarding their properties. And uh, Ventura County Alafco is responsible for selecting the independent special district representative to sit on the new oversight board. And included in your uh, packets is the uh, cover letter requesting that the board uh, select a candidate uh, that um, to uh, vote for tonight. And there are four candidates running. Uh, Russ Baggerly uh, from Cayugas Municipal Water District and uh, Ojai Valley Sanitation District. Mark Johnson uh, from Rancho Simi Recreation and Park District. Mike Mishler from Pleasant Valley Recreation and Park District. And uh, Tina Rivera from United Water Conservation District. The, uh, dist or the uh, board can only vote for one candidate. And uh, we are uh, recommending that the uh, board ch uh, review, choose, and vote for a candidate uh, for the Ventura County uh, Oversight Board Special District Representative. Any questions? Are there any questions on this for Anthony? None? No. Okay. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, I think it's time for a campaign speech. <laughs> Seeing one candidate for this uh, this job in the room. Yeah, you got to sell me. You got to sell yeah. me. Well, I've been working on a lot of background and material for, this for a long time and working with the county controller, auditor down there, uh, finding out information. 
and then going down to City Hall here and digging up documents and all this type of stuff on RDAs. And I've also talked with people up in the, our California Special Districts Association about RDAs and stuff. So I'm kind of up to speed on all that. So ready to go. And uh, I've compiled, I think, I think everybody's heard about it, uh, I've asked the county controller to put together a spreadsheet of all the funds that are being extracted by the 10 existing RDAs across Ventura County today, or, or last year, I should say. And that added up for all the special districts across Ventura County, the 10 different RDAs are extracting $1.8 million from all the different special districts last year. Uh, so the goal is to try to, you know, shut these things down, have, have the property sold off and distri distribute those funds and pay off those bonds as quick as possible so we can shut down and, and stop, stop uh, losing that money. In our case, for the people who don't know in the public, uh, in our particular case, it's about $210,000 last year was taken out of our income from property tax by the city of Camarillo for their... Uh, for their redevelopment agency work. And it's important to know that when cities are talking about redevelopment work, often it's reported in the, in the newspapers and media like it's their funds. Well, most of that money doesn't come from the city funding. It comes from the school agencies, it comes from the county government agencies, and it comes from all the various special district agencies that they're extracting money from for their project. And the city, has absolute control. We have no veto power, no input, no nothing. So this would be the very first time that we'll have a representative from a special district uh, overseeing some of these activities. So anyway, that's some background in history. Thank you, Mike. Any other comments, questions? Um, is there a nomination for uh, the candidate that we should vote for? I will nominate Mike Mishler for this position. I will second. Okay. We'll start with a vote on Mike Mishler then. <coughs> Director Kelly? Aye. Director Dixon? Aye. Director Mishler? Aye. Director Magner? Aye. Chairman Malloy? Aye. You're the man, Mike. Okay. Go get him, man. Now, Mike, Mike's been uh, really on top of this issue for a long time now. And, um, you know, I always saw this little budget item, and I never really, I never really understood where that number went to. And I, Leo sort of understood it, and I, I kind of like, eh, it's sort of irritating. And Mike really dug into it and figured it out, and it really is something that needs to be addressed. And I know you'll be all over those guys if you, if you get elected. So, okay, item 9E. Consideration and approval of employment agreement between the district and general manager. Good evening, Kathleen. So much order. Good evening, Chairman Malloy and members of the board. This evening, I'm going to be presenting to you the updated general manager contract. It is recommended that the board review and approve the employment agreement between the district and um, Mary Otten, the district's general manager. As you know, Mary came to the district in 2014. The board approved the second, that was when the original contract was signed, and the board approved a second amendment um, in June of 2017. And in May of this year, the board <clears throat> met with Mary and agreed to terms and conditions of an updated contract. The updated contract will lengthen the term to five years instead of the three years of the previous contract. There is also additional language regarding compensation, benefits, vacation, annual leave, as well as evaluations and termination. The current language allows administrative leave, which we've removed from the, current, from the new contract, um, and an increase to her vacation allowance. This new contract will also allow a 3% merit increase on the first pay period in July of 2018 and will continue the merit increases each year of the contract with a maximum salary of $168,067.16. Again, it's recommended that the board review and approve the employment contract or employment agreement between the district and Mary Otten, the district's general manager. 
Any questions or comments? Any questions for Kathleen? None? No. Okay. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, Elaine, would you like to address this briefly since you're yeah, in personnel? I'll, <laughs> I, 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 I will talk. You did a lot of the heavy lifting on this. so. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Catherine did a lot of it too, so I want to thank her for that. And um, we went from a three-year to a five-year because we went from a three-year, we then amended it in a year, and so it just keeps adding on and things like that. Every year that we we do something, why we kept amending it. So um, we decided to go with a five-year. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a customary in uh, special districts and record parks to go with a five-year. Uh, she's uh, she's assured us she will be with us for five years, so uh, we sure hope she will be, uh, and make sure that she's compensated appropriately. Um, and um, we are we're making uh, steps to uh, get rid of of the administrative leave, uh, which is a big thing um, that. Uh, in in the world of the lawyers, why that's kind of a an iffy situation the way we had it worded in there. So uh, we did clean that up. We got rid of it, and we took care of her by giving her a little bit of additional vacation pay or uh, vacation time off. So uh, if she would only take it. <laughs> so um, I uh, would be more than happy to make the motion to approve. Uh, the employment agreement between the district and Mary Otten to serve as our district's general manager. Hello. Oh. Um, yes. Uh, Mr. Aaron, have you submitted a, a speaker card? No, it's, it's, it's what you would prefer. Okay. Everybody happy, smiling? My golly, you'd think we were in a cemetery district. What's your problem, buddy? You're out there. You're kicking butt. You're trying to get these guys to do what you want them to do, and, and they see you coming, and they go, oh, my God. You watch cement set out there. Would you smile, please? Can we have a smile? That's, that's close. I'd like to comment briefly to say that um, we, you know, there's time, money, and people. We talked about that. The biggie is people. Do we have the right people? Do we have the right person in Mary? We're talking about Mary right now. I don't think so. I don't think so because I don't think she has the jet energy. I don't think she has the drive. I don't think she has the uh, the fire in the belly. Uh, it all, all of this, all these numbers that you folks have uh, condescended to to award her by some miraculous uh, set of circumstances all coincide so that by the time she gets her pension, she's got the max that. She could probably reasonably get under the circumstances, unless, of course, she wanted to extend it much further. Five years is a long time in a little district like this. A lot of things happen. Uh, you know, you get you get people. The longer you commit to them, the more it's human nature to slow down and to think more about me. You know, no risk taking. Uh, let's just kind of. Go with the flow. And I'm, I'm not satisfied as a citizen here at all in the results that we have seen under uh, Mary's, uh, Mary's, during Mary's tenure. She's a fine person, but that's not what we're talking about. I'd like to know why you're doing this, why you're giving those extra this and extra that. Uh, there's no performance appraisal mentioned. It doesn't have to be. Uh, Mary can, uh, can say, hey, I want a, a performance appraisal in, in the general public if she wants to. I'd like to see that. I would ask you to defer on, on making a decision until you've got some citizens to, to challenge the whole concept of what, of what you're doing here. Uh, th this, is, this, is, this ain't right. And um, 
I'd like to say that, that Mary would lead the way. I don't think that she has the temperament to do that and to, to make a commitment, for her, ask her to make a commitment for five more years to this outfit. I don't think so. Your decision. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aaron. Uh, would you like to repeat the motion, Elaine? Okay. <clears throat> Um, I'll move to approve the uh, employment agreement between the district and Mary Otten to serve as the district's general manager. Do I have a second? Second. Director Magner? Aye. Director Dixon? Aye. Director Mishler? Aye. Director Kelly? Aye. Chairman Loy? Aye. Motion carries five to zero. Look forward to five more users with you, Mary, very much. Thank you. Okay, item F was removed, so that moves us to informational items. We'll start with uh, me, uh, just a few. I wanted to congratulate uh, Camarillo Healthcare District Board for resolving their issues related to their former CEO and attorney and recovering a very substantial amount of money to the community to put towards the Camarillo Healthcare District's needs. Also, they have a judgment against the attorney to provide a very similar amount of money. And um, I congratulate them on doing the hard work to make that happen. Um, I'd also like to congratulate the staff on the renovation at uh, Kildee, at the, the tennis courts and the new pickleball courts. They came out looking really nice, uh, done well ahead of schedule. and. Um, they really make that, 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 that whole park is starting to look really sharp with the new picnic uh, pavilion and, and that. It really looks excellent. Um, I also attended the 50 plus expo and that was also a really great event. It just gets bigger and better every year. Uh, Jane, you and your staff are just, it's just fantastic. And you know, the excitement of the people attending it, it's just, it's just, it's, it's a tremendous value to this community. Um, last week, director Mishler and, uh, Mrs. Young and I watched in on a CalPERS webinar on uh, pre-funding unfunded un, uh, liability obligations. And um, the, the ostensible goal of the webinar is to sort of inform us what our options were and they, they have a they Excuse have Excuse me, a you series. mentioned that was put on by CalPERS yeah. for us. I think I did. Oh, okay. CalPERS webinar. Um, and um, this is one of the slides that they, but they used. And um, to anybody that, that owns a home and has a mortgage, this is, this is not news, that if you borrow less money, that you make less payments on the loan over time. And essentially, they're, they're showing you what would happen if, for example, here's a, here's a, a hypothetical organization with a $1 million unfunded, uh, li un unfunded liability. And uh, if they dropped 100000 in at the front end to pay down the the note and the the gray line there on the left shows what the actual balance on that loan is over the 30 year period that it's amortized and as you can see up to about year 15 you're actually negative amortizing your <laughs> actual amount that we owe on that on that is going to go up for the first 15 years but if you pay it down essentially 10 percent uh, at the front end then you never go negative and if you look at the column, at the chart over on the right, where it shows the, the actual total payments, your total payments drop from two million six to two million five, saving one hundred sixty-six thousand dollars. But you know that's just essentially showing the value of, of interest over time, um, and the cost of money over time. So they 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 showed these these different things because their real goal in this webinar is to get more agencies to put more money in sooner so that their unfunded liability percentage drops. Because where it is now, it's in an extremely vulnerable position. And uh, all of the public things that they've been sending out about their investment returns have been super positive. They, their claim for 2017, I believe, was 15% for the calendar year of 2017. But it was actually mentioned during the seminar that the investments during this fiscal year, which would be you know July 1st of 17 up to June 30th, which you know a few weeks from now, through April, their investments had earned 
8%. So because they're almost one third underfunded, the, the annual forecasted return uh, of, of uh, 7% isn't actually going to be reached because they're missing one third of the money. So they're actually gonna, we're going to have more unfunded liability this year. Uh, and that, that announcement will come next month. So, um, and that future unfunded liability isn't going to be put on a 30 year schedule, it's going to be put on a 20 year schedule. So the payment amounts are going to be more aggressive. And um, so you're, you're hearing this topic sort of briefly alluded to in all of the different government agencies conversations in the last few weeks. Um, uh, for some, it's much more difficult than others. The city of Oxnard's unfunded liability is $269 million, and their payment due July 1st is $20 million. That's just a cash payment in to help write the fund. So these numbers are really significant, and uh, <coughs> they're actually working on a plan that would allow agencies to invest their money with CalPERS so that they could earn money on their money so that they could pay their CalPERS bill later, which to me seems extremely risky because you're, we're essentially already betting on the investment returns of CalPERS and to put more money up front into that, it, it's like buying your own company stock for your, your retirement plan. If your company does poorly, you, you lose your job and you lose your retirement. It's very similar sort of problems with that sort of scenario. But um, in any way, um, they're, next 10 year investment return forecast is only 6.2% and they need seven with a full, fully funded fund to break even. So we're going to see more and more of this in the years ahead. Um, and the last thing I have is that I got a phone call from a representative of the Pleasant Valley Historical Society and they notified me that I'm being named Don of Camarillo. Each year they pick 10 or 12 people that have served as volunteers for an extended period of time in Camarillo and they uh, award them this title of Don or Doña in honor of Don Adolfo Camarillo. And um, so I'd like you to all put August 16th on your calendar because we're gonna have a big barbecue to celebrate that, that day. And uh, I, hope, I hope to see other, other members of our board in the future uh, get the same honor. That's all I have. <clears throat> Next is uh, Ventura County Special District Association. Okay, um, I'll give you a brief report on that. Last night we met, um, we had a speaker that had been uh, scheduled for um, last December, but that meeting had been canceled due to the fires. So um, it uh, dealt with uh, cybersecurity, um, was uh, interesting speech. Um, I don't know where his voice went to, but he was extremely hard to listen to. So, but he had good information and and things. So, um, so it was a, it was a good uh, thing, and uh, the food was absolutely excellent from Otavio's. So, as always, so that was that was good. So, you want me to go on with special district? Yeah. Why don't you Why don't you jump okay. on to? Um, yeah. Director Mishler and I attended uh, CSDA's legislative days um, in May, and it was probably one of the best I've ever attended. They changed the structure of the, the two-day event, and it was much more productive. Um, the first day was the advocacy day, and we uh, spent the day preparing to meet with the legislative members and staff, and then we had the actual meetings. Um, during the downtime, they had, um, the uh, staff, CSDA staff had uh, arranged guest speakers uh, for us to stop by a room that we could go in and listen to and you could just kind of come and go as you wanted to and uh, they spoke on various items and it was really some very interesting things. So the second day was the policy day and uh, in the morning while we were having breakfast we got a policy brief and uh, then we did uh, three in-depth uh, breakout sessions, one in uh, human resources and personnel, one in public works and facilities, and the third one was in revenue. Um, after the breakouts, everyone reconvened and the three breakout presenters were available for further Q&A uh, along with the advocacy staff uh, from all the attendees. Um, the three bills that we discussed with the um, 
legislative staff, we, our group did not, uh, I think very few of the legislative, uh, uh, the groups met with actual legislators. Um, our legislative uh, people were not available. I believe Jackie was down here making a presentation. And uh, the other uh, legislative uh, member, uh, he wasn't available. So I did see he got reelected last night. So um, would be, and so did, uh, well, they'll both be running in, this, in uh, November. So the three bills, um, they did, uh, we did Assembly Bill 2065, which was uh, local agencies uh, surplus lands. Uh, interesting that it died in committee a few days after legislative days. Um, they don't uh, anticipate it showing back up this year. Uh, however, they do anticipate it showing up possibly next year again. Um, the next one is Senate Bill 929, and it's one that we co-sponsored, and it has to do with special districts' websites. It came out of the Little Hoover, um, the most recent Little Hoover report. Uh, bottom line is that it deals with transparencies and that many of the uh, smaller special districts don't have websites, um, and it's moving right along. It passed, uh, let's see, I think it's uh, already into the, uh, uh, move. It, passed the Senate uh, with a 38 to zero vote and has moved on to the assembly. So I, I would assume that uh, Governor Brown will be seeing it before the end of the session and will be uh, uh, voting for it or uh, signing it rather. Uh, the last one is uh, Assembly Bill 3037, uh, de de redevelopment agencies. Um, it's being held in the Appropriations Committee and is probably likely to die this year. Um, However, the author wants to keep working on it with the stakeholders to, uh, um, to keep it moving, so it will probably reappear in 2019 um, with a new governor in office because uh, Governor Brown has already indicated that he won't sign any redevelopment bills. So, so that is it for that. So. For now. For now, yeah, for now. Till the, the next crop. Till so til the next it. one, and, and it, you saw Mary had pulled that off of the agenda. Um, I think this is, might be something that we wanna be talking about in policy regarding us doing um, how we're going to be able to respond to the grassroots action things yeah. in a more, uh, being ready, being prepared yeah. to be able to do that um, because uh, the team that is now up in CSDA is, uh, I mean, we've had really good teams. Right now, the, the, the group seems to be really clicking with the legislative people. And, um, you know, they'll try to get as much done this year, just getting ready for next year because part of them turn over again. So sure. they like to, to get as much done as they can. So, yeah, it, but it was a good session and uh, well put together. And um, it was... Um, well attended, so uh, we didn't have as much attendance I, uh, that we did last year because the, of the little Hoover commission last year. So, yeah. but uh, but it was it was very good. So, super. Thanks, Elaine. Uh, Mike, Santa Monica Mountains. Yes, I attended the uh, May twenty first meeting, and if you will connect that dot to the other dot that that. Uh, that Lane was talking about. I was actually up in Sacramento, so I was at a, a meeting, uh, a dinner meeting with the uh, Venture account, uh, the California Special Districts Association, and then I, I left that meeting early, the dinner meeting early, and hot-footed it across town to the resource uh, California Resource Building, and went upstairs where they had a teleconference call in from that room building. Down into uh, down into Los Angeles, so I was able to attend from uh, Sacramento for that meeting, uh, but nothing really special was going on for that meeting. But um, that's all I had to do uh, to say on that. Okay, uh, standing committees, finance. We're right on target. Uh, ready to hit the the revenue number almost to the dollar and comfortably under on expenses. Mark, won't we bring up that slide you had? Can you bring up that slide that Mark had? Or is it too late? Are oh, you guys already really the power down? And go home. Yeah. So on that slide that Mark had, he talked about the left-hand side of that graph. On the right-hand side of that same chart, uh, there was a second graph, 
And if you look on the, in the annual payment side, what's important there, in case you didn't see this, that gray line you see on there, forget the orange one for now, but that gray line is starting off at, there's a number there, it doesn't matter what the number is exactly, but the point is, it's starting off at year one, and then in year five, 10, the bottom numbers are five, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So that's a 30 year uh, timeline on the bottom. But you can see how those annual payments that we're gonna have to make to CalPERS are going up. And that's with the same personnel be being paid exactly the same amount of money with everything else. So even if we, did, we froze all our wages for the next 30 years, it doesn't matter our CalPERS payments going up that we're gonna have to make up to Sacramento for all this are gonna be going up through the roof. And so down the road, there's gonna be, and not just us, I mean, all we have no input into that. Uh, we have no control except firing all our staff or something. But uh, no, that wouldn't do it. No, I'm, I'm just saying. Well, we still, still got to pay. Still Actually, pay that's that's true yeah. because it does. Even if you don't have any staff, this is the unfunded liability, which means even if we had zero staff starting tomorrow, we still got to pay all that stuff off for their retirement. Anyway, um, but you can see that that number is going right up, and so that's 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 assuming they can make their seven percent or whatever rate of return and everything else over those next thirty years. So. It's looking real grim for us down the road. That was one of the items that Leo had mentioned earlier in her presentation about one of the challenges we have uh, going time forward. I just want to point that out. Thanks. Okay. Th thanks, Mike. Uh, liaison committee. Yeah. 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 Li liaison committee met, and uh, we we had a. a Pretty, pretty uh, extensive discussion on, uh, on two subjects. One, one is that we've uh, sort of directed Greenplay to come up with uh, more detailed descriptions of options one and two. As you remember when they presented, there was options one, two, and three in terms of what our uh, project would be going forward. And three had a lot of detail, and one, and one had no detail, and two had very little. So they were going to come, come up with uh, some additional plans regarding the, our, our various uh, options. There seems to be a general pretty, pretty uh, solid consensus that we do need to expand the senior center and we do need to do something about a gymnasium. So those are, those are pretty, pretty much uh, firm in terms of everybody's opinions and what we do beyond that is in question. Uh, the second thing was that we talked a lot about financing, which is, of course, is the, is the big question as to how do we pay for all this, and it really has not probably gotten the discussion that it should have had before. Um, the uh, the, city, the uh, city is, uh, I believe, is uh, undertaking a discussion as to exactly what level of financial commitment they're willing to have in this project, and I think that's gonna be really critical for us going forward to help us know exactly where we are uh, so we can figure out you know, uh, what we can afford to build and uh, what fundraising mechanism we would have to do to pay for that. So uh, it was a good meeting, and uh, we're meeting. I'm not sure when we're meeting again, but. So. Okay, personnel. We are moving along with uh, the employee handbook, and uh, we we met, and with then we had a closed session with the right. entire board. So you guys are up to date. Yeah. So we have a upcoming meeting. So. Okay, and policy meets tomorrow, correct? Yeah, yes. policy meets tomorrow. Okay. Um, foundation. Well, we've been busy. Um, we, uh, if you're, if you follow us on uh, Facebook and things, well, you'll see what we've been doing. We um, did two uh, restaurant, uh, su very successful restaurant uh, uh, dining outs, uh, about eighteen hundred dollars on the two of them. With uh, would like to thank Cronies and Toppers for partnering with us. Uh, we are getting ready for um, the food trucks, which will be uh, at our movies in the park for the next five weeks. With uh, We're partnering with the recreation department. So uh, as you come to listen to the music and before the um, uh, movies, why you can uh, eat at the truck uh, food trucks. Um, also, we are getting ready, and I think we're almost uh, 
uh, ready to start selling some tickets for our annual event, which will be on August 25th. So please, please go to the website, take a look. Um, we're looking for sponsors, um, and we're also, uh, is it already up, Megan, for them to buy tickets or not yet? Oh, okay, it's already so you can buy your tickets. Um, so that's our fourth annual party for the parks on August 25th. Also, we've got some other fun things coming up. Uh, I think I talked last time about uh, the Donut Dash, the 5K Donut Dash we're planning on December 8th, and we're going to add a ugly uh, sweater uh, 5K to go with it. So, um, and we already have uh, people who have registered to participate. So we're really looking forward to, to those events. So we are very, very busy and uh, thank the staff for the support they've given us and uh, moving forward. Run 5K in an ugly sweater, huh? Yep. We'll do anything for money. <laughs> <laughs> Great idea, thank you. Mary, general manager report. A uh, couple things, the, we're, the staff is in the process of finishing the community center men's bathroom. So the floor was going in. So hopefully that will be done by next week. So we'll have a matching men's and women's bathroom uh, that will be updated. Uh, park signage has been going in over the course of the last week and that, so you should be seeing some of the new signage instead of the old stuff that was kind of deteriorating. As uh, Chairman uh, Malloy had mentioned, the tennis and pickleball courts are in progress. So besides just doing the courts, you'll also notice that um, staff is in the process of refinishing the benches, putting new nets in. So when everybody comes back, it looks like a, a new facility to include painting the light poles and such. So that's moving along um, in that progress. Uh, just a couple other things. Camp fund hard to believe starts June 18th which is right around the corner as kids are getting out of school as you saw in the district highlights we have parks and, and recreation month so during the month of July there's free events going on for the entire month so once again I encourage people to go online uh, there's posters that are out um, you can see on Facebook so once again there's something to do every day in the month of July um, a couple other quick things. Um, Megan will be reaching out to board members to do a, uh, try and figure out a good day to do a workshop for the needs assessment. So that way bring everybody kind of up to speed of kind of where we were talking about from the last liaison. So we have everybody on board with that. Uh, committee meetings coming up. We have personnel next week. We have finance um, on the 20th, but I think we're trying to change that to the 19th. So I'll confirm that. And then we have policy right now on June 7th and June 28th. So I think we're good with those meetings. That's what I have. Great, work them hard. Okay, oral communications, informal items from board members or staff requiring action. Start with the board. Neil, you got anything? Uh, yeah, I, uh, this, uh, this weekend my wife and I uh, went down to uh, Bob Kildee Park and I just echo what uh, Director Malloy said, the park was absolutely beautiful. Um, activities going on all over the place, the, uh, uh, the uh, pickleball courts and the tennis courts look great. I can't imagine that both the pickleball players and the tennis players can't be happy with the way those courts look. And uh, the, uh, the new uh, covering on the uh, uh, picnic area looks, looks really great too, so, so a really great job with that. Um, and secondly, I'd like to, uh, this is the first I've, I've heard that uh, Director Malloy was nominated as uh, Don of the city of Camarillo, but I'd like to congratulate him on that. I think it's very well deserved. Uh, I've known Director Malloy as a volunteer uh, in this community for more than 30 years. I can still remember him down there dragging baseball fields as a, as a volunteer and has been continuing uninterrupted uh, contributions to the city since that time. So congratulations, well deserved. Up. I've driven around a little bit and I've noticed all the signs, including the ones right across the street from my house. And <laughs> I, I really like them. You know, I was one of the ones that didn't want to really invest the money in signs, but now I see the error of my ways and I really like those signs. So anybody that tries to tear one down or spit on it or something, I'm going to have to deal with me. Um, Next item, and I'll be brief. Um, 
is I voted yesterday, and when I went, I'm over at Las Colinas over there, which is usually fairly brisk uh, uh, in, in regard to people showing up to vote. And taking into consideration a lot of people are voting by mail now. Uh, but even so, even just like last year and the year before, it, it was like this. But I noticed how light the vote was. And so I asked the people there, has it been light all day? And I could tell because like when you go to put your name in the book, they, they go through all of the pages so you can look to see how many people have written their name down. And there wasn't very many at all. I walked right in at 5.30 and was first in line and voted. And uh, I thought with all the stuff going on around California, uh, people maybe want to pay a little more attention and take care of business at the ballot box. In, in any event, um, I, I, I just I couldn't quite understand it. Uh, we have um, a, a state where in the last two years, and I checked, not every single bill, but a general perusal. And there, I could not find a single bill, and I'm sure there is one, but I couldn't find it, that actually helped common everyday people that are going to work every day and uh, bustering their rears and taking care of their families and so forth. It's almost all identity politics of one sort or another. And I think that the people of California need to rise up and say, we're done with that. We need to get back to the work of being a great state that we are and uh, stop cowtailing to all these people who seem to have a completely different idea what this, this state should be about. And with that, I'm off my soapbox. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Mrs. Magner. <laughs> um, well, I you kind of, you know, you know, okay, I, I was just going to say, uh, okay, thank you. Um, I, I second what uh, Director Kelly says about the vote. I think I saw just over 10% of the people in Ventura County voted. Um, so I, I, that's very um, disheartening, to say the least. So, um, the Chairman Malloy, I'm very honored to be able to call you Don now. <laughs> And I want to know, do you get to ride one of the white horses? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I think this is ring, though. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I attended um, the closing ceremonies for Camarillo Pony Baseball along with uh, um, recreation manager uh, Eric Story and uh, Lanny uh, Benny. And um, they... Uh, I'm sure you guys know they've they've many years ago decided to do an award for me. But anyhow, I gave it to a very, very humble young man. Um, totally uh, put him into another another world. And I, I just we had a really great conversation afterwards. And and uh, he said he'd never won anything like that. And and it was just kind of interesting to to see this young man who was 14 years old and. He really was lost for words, so um, he didn't have a clue who I was, and that was fine, but for uh, CPBA to honor him, so uh, wonderful turnout there, usually closing ceremonies, about 32 people. I think there was several hundred people there, which was very, 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 very nice, excuse me, so, uh, but uh, once again, congratulations. Oh, thank you, Lane. Mike? Yeah, I want to say congratulations, too, to Mark. I've known Mark probably 30 years or something here in town. And uh, like, like has already been mentioned, for people who don't know, Mark was one of those, he was like the lead person for boys baseball to take care of the fields and the ground. And you would see him out there for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours during the week, uh, you know, fixing water issues or 
moving the dirt around and getting everything ready, uh, just doing that as a volunteer. A lot of us have spent a lot of time doing volunteering work for the, for the community. And uh, just piggybacking on to what Jane was talking about earlier here for volunteers, uh, one of the reasons that Camrail gets by is because of all the volunteering that we have here in town from Mark and ourselves and people out here in the audience, ASO and everybody else in the community. Uh, we have uh, just literally hundreds and thousands of volunteers across the community. And it's not just facilities and stuff, it's all the people out here who make all this stuff happen. So I wanna say thank you for all the volunteers, including Mark, for that. Um, I just wanna also make a note to the board, and, and I already mentioned this to Mary, that I just recently found out, and I was kind of shocked when I found this out because I, I thought I knew that what was going over in Rancho Simi Reckon Park. Rancho Simi Reckon Park, from my understanding, I've asked Mary and their staff to dig into this more. Apparently, for their Quimby fees, do not have to go through the city. Uh, Rancho Simi has set up, there's some state guidelines apparently, that if you go through this procedure, whatever it is from the state, you can actually bypass the city and, and do your own calculation for Quimby fees. And so that's what simi has been doing for decades, apparently. Uh, I, I have their schedule and everything else, and I knew what they were doing. I didn't realize, I thought they were doing that in agreement with the city, but apparently not. They're just doing that independent from the city. So that's one of the things we need to obviously look into. Um, so, uh, and for people who remember the last time the city did a calculation for us, we, the city came up with their calculations for $64,000 for a proposed uh, 282 homes over here off of Upland. And uh, to, that's supposed to, according to the city's own calculations, we're supposed to have the equivalent of 3.3 acres of new park space available for those 282 homes. And $64,000 won't even buy you a piece of playground equipment, let alone three acres of new land and, and building them and everything else. So um, anyway, that's a way to help. Uh, this something we, have, we, can, we should be checking into to see what develops for that. And then I was gonna ask Mary, do we have any idea if we're gonna get an update from the uh, Senior Center study, uh, like a little workshop or something? Do we have any proposal on that next month? Or this month, I mean? Yeah, um, I'm asking uh, Megan to work with the board to figure out a date that we can do a workshop. For okay, the board. okay, thank you. Yeah, and the public should be aware then. That, okay, correct. Okay, thank you very much. That's all. Uh, staff, do you have any items? No? Okay, we're adjourned. Mark, you need to get your cheerleader outfit on. <laughs> <laughs>